Hey guys, welcome back to Nursing Navigator. Are you ready to ace the NORSET exam? I know studying for these exams can be super stressful, so I'm here to break down the top 10 most frequently asked questions from previous NORSETs. We're going to make these concepts super simple and easy to understand so you can walk into that exam feeling confident and prepared. Let's dive right in. All right, first up, let's talk about central venous pressure or CVP. Now this might sound intimidating, but it's actually pretty straightforward. Think of it like this. CVP is essentially the pressure in the big vein that carries blood back to your heart, the right atrium. It's like checking the water pressure in a pipe, but instead of water, it's your blood. A normal CVP should be between 2 and 6 millimeters of mercury. Why does this matter? Well, if the pressure is too high or too low, it can tell us if the heart is pumping effectively. You'll see this measured a lot, especially in critical care units, to make sure patients are stable. Next up, let's talk about vaccines, specifically ones that are a big no-no during pregnancy. Remember, when you're pregnant, you're not just protecting yourself, you're protecting your little one too. So, which vaccine is an absolute no-go during pregnancy? The answer is rubella, also known as German measles. Rubella vaccine is what we call a live attenuated vaccine, meaning it contains a weakened version of the virus. While this is generally safe and helps your body build immunity, it can be risky for developing babies. So, it's super important to make sure your rubella immunity is up to date before you get pregnant. Let's talk about reflexes, specifically what happens when someone becomes unconscious. Our reflexes are like automatic responses our body makes, and they can tell us a lot about what's going on neurologically. So, which reflex is the first to disappear when someone loses consciousness? The answer is the swallowing reflex. Think about it, swallowing is so essential to protect our airway and prevent things from going down the wrong pipe. When someone is unconscious, they lose that automatic swallowing ability, which is why we worry about aspiration or things going into the lungs. It's also why you often see medical professionals protecting the airway of unconscious patients very carefully. Now let's dive into a hormonal condition called Addison's disease. In Addison's disease, your adrenal glands, which are like these little hats that sit on top of your kidneys, don't produce enough of certain hormones, specifically cortisol and aldosterone. These hormones play a big role in regulating salt and water balance in your body. So, when they're out of whack, it affects your electrolytes. Specifically, in Addison's disease, you see low sodium or hyponatremia and high potassium or hyperkalemia. These electrolyte imbalances can cause a whole bunch of problems, so it's super important to manage them carefully. Okay, moving on to a critical skill in healthcare, confirming endotracheal tube placement. An endotracheal tube, or ET tube for short, is a tube that's inserted into the trachea to help patients breathe, especially during emergencies or surgeries. But here's the thing, you absolutely need to make sure that tube is in the right place, otherwise you could be delivering oxygen to the stomach instead of the lungs, and that's a huge problem. So, what's the gold standard, the most accurate way to confirm ET tube placement? The answer is capnography. Capnography measures the carbon dioxide levels in the air that's exhaled. If the tube is in the right place, you'll see those CO2 levels, confirming you're good to go. Let's talk about giving intramuscular injections or IM injections to infants. Now, giving injections to tiny humans can be a little nerve-wracking, right? You want to make sure you're choosing the safest and most comfortable spot. So, where's the preferred site for IM injections in infants? The answer is the vastus lateralis muscle. That's the big muscle on the outer thigh. Why this muscle? Well, it's got a good amount of muscle mass even in babies, and it's far away from major nerves and blood vessels, making it the safest option. New parents and nursing students, this one's for you. We're talking about the hormone responsible for milk ejection, that beautiful process that allows mothers to breastfeed. We know prolactin is essential for milk production, but it's not the one that makes the milk flow. The hormone we're looking for is oxytocin. Oxytocin is often called the love hormone or the cuddle hormone because it's released during bonding moments, but it also plays a key role in breastfeeding. When a baby latches onto the breast, it triggers the release of oxytocin, which causes tiny muscles in the breast to contract, squeezing out the milk. Let's talk about a cardiac event you never want to miss, a heart attack. One of the biggest clues we look for is chest pain. 
but it's not always straightforward. That's where the ECG or electrocardiogram comes in. The ECG is like a window into your heart's electrical activity. And when someone's having a heart attack, specifically a type called a STEMI, which stands for ST elevation myocardial infarction, you'll see a very specific change on the ECG, ST segment elevation. This elevation is a major red flag and tells us that a part of the heart muscle is not getting enough blood flow. It requires immediate action to restore blood flow and minimize damage. Let's talk about hepatitis A, a viral infection that affects the liver. One of the things we always want to know with infections is the incubation period, the time it takes from when you're exposed to when you start showing symptoms. So how long is the incubation period for hepatitis A? The answer is 15 to 50 days, that's quite a range, right? And it's one of the reasons why tracing back contacts and preventing further spread can be tricky. Hepatitis A is typically spread through contaminated food and water or through close contact with an infected person. So hand washing, proper food handling, and vaccination are key to prevention. Last but not least, let's talk about assessing kidney function. Our kidneys are amazing filters, constantly cleaning our blood and getting rid of waste products. But how do we know if they're functioning properly? While we often look at blood tests like creatinine and bun, the best indicator of overall kidney function is the glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. The GFR tells us how much blood the kidneys are filtering each minute. A normal GFR is 90 or above. As kidney function declines, the GFR goes down, so it's a really important number to keep an eye on, especially in patients with kidney disease. And there you have it, the top 10 MCQs explained. Great job sticking with me through all of them. I hope you found this super helpful as you prepare for your Norset exam. Now I'm curious, which question did you find the trickiest? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, share it with your nursing squad, and subscribe to Nursing Navigator for more Norset tips, MCQs, and nursing concepts. Until next time, stay awesome, nurses!